What's up, gang? Today I'm taking a look at Temple OS. This is an operating system that was written completely by one man named Terry Davis, who also happened to suffer from schizophrenia. So chances are if you're here, you already know the story. But if you're not, I encourage you to go check it out. I think it's pretty fascinating. Uh, but what I'm going to be taking a look at today is a program called God Songs, which is a program that gives you seemingly random melodies. And I wanted to kind of dive into how that works. So I'm not a programmer, so I can't really describe what's going on software wise, but I am a musician. So I can describe how I think the software picks and chooses notes and in places to put the notes. Anyway, let's check it out. Um, so this is the operating system. Uh, over here on the right, you can see a, a menu that gives you all kinds of hotkeys. So control M brings up the menu with all the games that most of you are familiar with. Um, down here at the bottom of the right-hand menu is a section called Tongues, and this shows you that Terry thought he was in direct communication with God when he was using this operating system. So God can give you a word, he can give you a Bible passage, he can write you a song and create a picture. We are focusing on the God Song program, so we're going to press F6, and this brings up the God Song menu. Here you're presented with four parameters that you can change, which uh, changes the, the way the song sounds. So you can choose whether it should be a simple, normal, or complex tune. So I'm going to choose normal. You can choose whether it has rests. You can choose if it should be in 6-8. So 6-8 is a time signature. If it is unchecked, I would consider it to be in 4-4 four, four time. But if you click the 6-8 option, it will give you a 6-8 song. Lastly is the octave section. I usually like to leave it on three. I think that's the most pleasing octave. So anyway, after this, what you want to do is press escape and you're presented with a timer and it always says the Holy Spirit can puppet you. This timer is something Terry always kind of bragged about in his YouTube videos. So the way it creates a, a I would call it a pseudo random number is that it's just a, a timer that's counting incredibly fast and it looks like hexadecimal. And when you click the OK button, it will grab whatever value the timer was at at the time you pressed OK and it'll hold on to that value. And then you click it again to fill up this green bar. So this is giving us values for the song. And once it's filled, it'll bring you back here. So what we've just done is created the first half of this song. The songs always have two distinct sections. So we just created what I would call the A section. So the song plays the A section twice, and then it plays the B section twice, and then the whole thing repeats back to A. So it's always A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, and so on. So we created the A. Here's the B section. You can also just press escape to fill up the bars. And then once you have the second half of the song written, it'll play for you. So what we just heard is a 4-4 tune uh, with the A section repeated and then the B section repeated and then the whole thing repeats. Just to really illustrate that, let's create a simple tune, octave three. Simple tune, octave three. And let me put some things up on the screen to kind of visualize where we are. B, B2, and A1, A2, B1, B2. So also the tempo is usually 151 beats per minute, about. Um, also one thing to note, you can see that the menu these menu words up here are flashing and the cursor uh, over here is flashing yellow and those are always flashing on the beat of the music which I think is just kind of an interesting thing. The songs I would say 99% of the time adhere to that form. Uh, it gets a little glitchy I've found when you introduce rests or if I'm just using the operating system for a long time I find that sometimes it does not adhere to that form. Sometimes it gives me four separate 
uh, sections rather than just two and, and repeating the two. So one thing I do want to stress is that these form rules and basically all the rules apply to the God Song program, but not necessarily to the hymns that you would find in Terry's old videos or uh, on his supplemental CDs that are full of hymns. I would say the vast majority of the hymns follow these rules, uh, but there are some exceptions. So in terms of form, sometimes the hymns will have a long A section and a short B section, or sometimes it's a very short A and a short B and then a really long third section. So I think sometimes Terry would manually go in and alter things or he would manually create the hymns occasionally. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. So what else is going on? If you take a listen, you might think it doesn't sound completely random uh, uh, note-wise. Sometimes it even sounds like kind of a pleasing melody. And if something I think was truly random, it might sound a little bit more erratic and, and confusing. Um, but these usually sound, for the most part, pretty decent. So let's see what's going on. The reason for that is because the songs always use uh, all the notes within the key of C major or A minor or D Dorian or E Phrygian or whatever. Basically what that means is it only uses the white keys on the piano. When you eliminate the black keys from the piano, it allows music to sound a little bit more natural and there's it's less likely for dissonance to occur. So I think that was Terry's plan to uh, eliminate any chances for dissonance and try to create more pleasing tunes. Just to prove it to you, let's create a simple tune and I will learn it and play it back for you and show you that it only uses the white keys. And I refuse to do normal or complex because even normal tunes get kind of complex. All right, here it is. So also when playing this back, you might come to find that it only uses notes within one octave and it's from a low G to a high G and tunes never go anywhere outside of those constraints. If you choose another octave, obviously it can be lower or higher, but it always stays within two Gs. So in terms of God songs, it always uses the white keys, but there are a couple times in hymns that Terry uploaded uh, where black keys are used typically just for a, a little chromatic section. I think those are examples where Terry is uh, manually editing a song to make it a little more pleasing. But again, I'm not entirely sure. So we know what's going on with the notes, uh, but let's take a look at what's going on rhythm wise. You might be wondering what makes it a normal tune or a complex tune or a simple tune. Well, that just depends on the rhythms that are allowed to play in each type of tune. And if you listen closely to a bunch of God songs, you will find that it always only uses the same set of rhythms. So I think there is a, a catalog of rhythms that the program is allowed to choose from, and it randomly assigns beats of a measure, uh, these rhythms, and then also the notes. So um, simple tunes are only allowed to use quarter notes and eighth notes. Let me play you a simple tune to illustrate that. So if you listen closely, you'll find that that tune uses quarter notes or sets of two eighth notes, and simple tunes always only have those two rhythms. Moving on to normal, uh, you can carry over the two rhythms from the simple tunes. However, you can also add a set of three triplet eighth notes and a set of four sixteenth notes. Now, one thing to note that is a little weird is when you have a set of four sixteenth notes, the first and third note are always the same, and the second and fourth note are always the same. So it kind of creates this sound like it's just alternating between two notes. Uh, it's also possible for the first note and the second note to be the same note, which means the third and fourth note would also be the same note. And you do hear that pretty, pretty frequently as well. Let me play you an example of a normal song.
so moving on to a complex tune, uh, the program is allowed to choose the four rhythms that were in a normal tune, but it can also add on an eighth note followed by two sixteenth notes, two sixteenth notes followed by an eighth note, or a dotted eighth note followed by one sixteenth note. So let me play you an example of a complex tune and see if we can find some examples of those more complex rhythms. Just like all the other rules, this doesn't necessarily apply to uh, hymns that Terry uploaded. Um, occasionally, you will hear 30-second notes in some of his hymns. So just keep in mind, the rules that you hear for God songs don't necessarily apply for hymns. Uh, but like I said, the vast majority of the hymns that were on uh, Terry's YouTube channel or on the supplemental CDs do follow the rules. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, um, but I do think maybe Terry was manually editing them. So now I think we have a better idea of how the program creates these seemingly random tunes. It only chooses notes within one octave on the white keys of the piano, and it only chooses from a bank of uh, available rhythms depending on the complexity that you chose for your God song. I do have to admit, sometimes you can notice a lot of melodies, you know, following a scale upwards or downwards or creating uh, chords of some sort. Um, part of me thinks that's just a, a part of the, the random nature of it, that it's just randomly making music that kind of sounds good. Um, sometimes I wonder if Terry coded it in such a way that it follows these musical tropes. I have no idea. I have no way to find out. Um, so that that's a mystery to me right now. Anyways, um, let's check out some of the other functions. Rests, if you include rests in your tune, to me it seems like it will just cut out uh, a quarter note or an eighth note. It always seems to be just a quarter note in length or an eighth note in length of a rest, but you'll hear it. There will just be a slight pause in the music. Let's create a tune with rests so we can check that out. Now, in order to demonstrate the 6-8, I'm going to play a simple tune just because it's a little easier to hear and show you how that differs from the 4-4 four four that I typically feel. Here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So there you can see uh, choosing 6-8 does make it adhere to the 6-8 time. So uh, up until now, I've only been creating songs where the first half and the second half use the same parameters. But just to show you that it is two halves of a song, I'm going to create, uh, uh, let's do simple rests 6-8 in octave one for the first half. And then let's do complex... No rests, no 6-8 in octave 5 in the second half, and you can very clearly hear the difference between the two halves here. So anyway, all I really wanted to illustrate is that certain elements of this are random, uh, but it's like randomness within a certain confines. So always the same notes, always the same rhythms, just uh, rearranged in different ways to create random tunes. And although I think the timer uh, method to create randomness maybe isn't technically a random number generator, but you know, statistically, it's like incredibly unlikely, nearly impossible for you to hit the same numbers, I think. So in that respect, yeah, I would call it random. I've listened to way more of these God songs than I ever care to do again, but like I said, I wanted to uh, find one that I liked and use it in a song, so I guess I'm going to hang around here and listen to a bunch more and see if I can find one uh, that really strikes me. So um, I'm going to stick with simple, call me a coward all you want, but sometimes those normal tunes 
are a little crazy. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with simple. Um, I think that'll be the easiest kind of tune to incorporate into a song. So after listening for kind of a long time, I finally settled on a tune that struck me as something I could really work with. Uh, this was a simple 6-8 song. I quickly learned it on piano and got to work at incorporating it into a tune. <laughs> 